మన్యేమ మహాభగవతం నరాధం దేవదర్శనం ఏన ప్రోక్త క్రియాయోగ పరిచర్య విధిర్హరే ఓం నమో భగవతే వాసుదేవాయ ఓం నమో భగవతే వాసుదేవాయ Vidura continued, I know that the great sage Narada is the greatest of all devotees. He has compiled the Panchabratrika procedure of devotional service and has directly met the Supreme Personality of God. Srila <coughs> Prabhupada explains, There are two different ways of approaching the Supreme Lord. One is called Bhagavata Marga, or the way of Srimad Bhagavatam, and the other is called Pancharatrika Vidhi. Pancharatrika Vidhi is a method of temple worship, and Bhagavata Vidhi is a system of nine processes which begin with hearing and chanting. The Krishna conscious movement accepts both processes simultaneously and thus enables one to make steady progress on the path of realization of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This Pancharatrika procedure was first introduced by the great sage Narada, as referred to here by Vidura. This is from the descriptions of the descendants of Dhruva Maharaj, Srimad Bhagavatam, 4th Canto, Chapter 13, the verse number 3. A very significant topic is introduced to us here today. It is far deeper than the simple description can cover. It's something like the theory, the ritual procedures that's called Pancharatrik. That includes everything, including the acceptance of a spiritual master, initiation rites. All this is included in the samskaras or the purificatory rituals in the human form of life. But the Bhagavata Viti, the Bhagavata Viti is something totally outside of the common. The Bhagavata Viti is the realization portion. It is the internal development. A Bhagavata, you know, is the most excellent devotee, is the most excellent uh, stage of consciousness. The Bhagavata comes from the Bhagavan, Bhagavat, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavat Mahatmya. It's Uttama, it's the highest. So the, the Bhagavata Viti, like Sri La Prabhupada explains here, is basically the teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam. It starts with Shravanam, hearing, Kirtanam chanting, Smaranam remembrance. All the nine steps of devotional service, they're described there and they're, uh, they're intermingling. 
Sometimes Bhagavata Viti and Pancharatri Kaviti, they intermingle. Sometimes the one substitutes the other and sometimes the absence of the one in the case of the Pancharatri Kaviti is not so disturbing. For example, a sannyasi who travels around the world, he is not worshipping a deity. But when he reaches a temple where there is a deity, he also participates in the worship and he is very happy. And he may even establish deities, but then he moves on. Because that's the nature of Bhagavat. It's the, it's the pass of living the essence. That's what you're supposed to reach. Like an Uttama Bhakta. It's not an artificial stage. It is something which only can be reached by realization. You cannot take Kanishta Adhikari course, Madhyam Adhikari course. Oh, no, no, I'm taking the Uttama Adhikari course. It doesn't work like that. There's no way. There's no access. You can take the Bhakta course, and then we will see what kind of a Bhakta you turn out to be. Uh, it will be seen by the results alone. We can only try, and the more we try, the better things will go. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, incredible, the Bhagavata Mark. We are actually enchanted by the Bhagavata Mark. It is beyond rules and regulations. But it, it's sustained by rules and regulations. Like, for example, kindness. Kindness. It doesn't have rules and regulations, but it has something in the essence which is called kindness. So in kindness, I may scream at you. How is that? Because you're in a danger. So I like you so much, I always talk softly to you, but then all of a sudden I go, Stop it! What is this? Why are you screaming at me? Well, you, you were just going to step into a hole and fall into a ditch. So I just wanted to stop you uh, from that danger. So, like this is... Uh, it, you cannot put hard and fast rules on kindness, on love. They don't fit. They frustrate the whole. So therefore, even nati, even violence, we are absolutely against violence, but there is nati hingsa, there is unavoidable violence. Sometimes, some moments, we are not doubting about being violent. There is a snake just going towards a little baby, huh? Poisonous snake. And I take a stick and go, oh, throw the snake away, right? Uh, so I'm very violent with the snake, but I prefer to, before it's going to get to the baby and maybe bite the baby. Hmm? So things like that, you know, there's situations you can't avoid it. But you like to avoid it, but those moments you don't want to avoid it. So you have to understand what is the meaning of something. Just following an external ritual, it doesn't mean you have realized anything about it. I mean, the external ritual may be like, for example, we have an, a ritual which says, go and read the Bhagavatam every morning. That's what we are doing right now. That's a ritual. Reading the Bhagavatam. I'm doing that almost for 40 years now, reading the Bhagavatam. Memorizing verses from the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's very delightful. Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayachita. Jnana Yati Asuvaira Gyan. Gyan. Gyan Chayata Haitukam. 
all the Bhagavatam verses are so full of nectar. Krishna is Vadamopagate, Dama Jnana, Dipisha, Hakalo, Nashtam, Drisha, Mesha, Pudanar, Kudonodita. As Bhagavatam appeared in this world to give light to us in this age of darkness. Fantastic. Still, it's a ritual. I could also read Chaitanya Charitamrita instead. Hmm? I could read nothing and just talk about the Bhagavata Mark. <coughs> Sometimes I want to give a class and I start talking and I don't even open the book. It has happened to me without meaning make any offense against the book, but it just starts flowing out. I don't even get to, to, to start reciting the shloka. But the reading of the Bhagavatam, it is, it is, it is a, a, a training for becoming a better servant. So if there's some more important service to be done right now, I may not go to class. Because I'm, why should I go to class to learn and become a better servant when I'm ignoring an important service which has to be done? Like, for example, kindness to others. It's a very important service. So, for example, we have a visitor sitting up there. I'm saying, oh, can you come, invite you to come to our class? No, he says, I can't. I have to go in 10 minutes. So then I'm just going to leave him there. No, it's his one-time chance in life to hear something from a Vaishnava. So I'm not going down to class. I'm talking to him. To the last minute he's with us to so give him some idea of what it's all about. We have to be attached to the essence, not to the form. Narada Muni is the pure devotee, greatest devotee. He has one lake where he became a gopi. It's called Narada Kunda. It's very hidden away in a very beautiful place, very close to Radha Kunda and Kushum Sarova. There is also a deity there of Narada Muni. He came to Vindavan. He wanted to become an eternal associate of Krishna. Like everybody else who hears about it. Say, what? Krishna? Eternal residence in Vindavan? Spiritual body? I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> Why should you not go? Or you want to stay, or you want to stay and pay uh, taxes in Munich for the rest of your life? Huh? I wonder what you want to do with your life. Huh? If you can go to, to an eternal place of, of love. But it's very, very, very individual. Everybody has to go through his individual tasks, his individual challenges. And the more you decide, yes, I'll do it, yes, I'll pass, I'm going to go that way, the more advancement you make. Actually, you make the advancement by your wish to serve. The more you serve, the more you advance. If you want to advance, Krishna will give you all the chance. Really, he knows everything. He knows everything, everything. You see, Prabhupada, my Guruji, he went to America with no money in his pocket. Krishna could have sent him with a million dollars. Indians have a lot of money. Even then, at that time, there were big companies. So, <laughs> but Prabhupada was sent by Krishna with a, two boxes of books. Can you imagine, you know, for a 65-year-old man to reaching in Boston with five dollars in your pocket and with two boxes full of books? How is he going to move? Huh? How is he going to go anywhere? You know, we say travel lightly, no? <laughs> when you go on a journey. But for somebody of his age, and some other he managed. I don't know how. And he kept moving around with his books until they were sold. So Prabhupada actually went 
on a on a beautiful preaching project. He went from India to the United States with boxes of books to do Sankita. What is that? That is a historic story. It's more historic than Srinivas, Shamananda and Narutam, who took the books with a bullock card from Vindavan to 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 Bengal. And then when they passed through Bihar, close to where Sadhu Maharaj lives, the Ray Birambir had some had some rubbers working for him. It's a poor state, so he was of that character. And those rubbers, they stole the books from Srinivasacharya in the night. And funnily enough, they had two trunks of books. And Prabhupada went to the U.S. with two trunks of books. Now, Srinivasacharya and they, they had bullock cart. So that means they had bulls, they had guards, they had people traveling with them. When Srinivasacharya went off on his journey, the reason was at that time there was no book printing, so all the books had been hand scratched. A beautiful system you have seen, I've seen, given you the books <coughs> of a palm leaf scratched with a little metal and then put in oils and with some black powder so that the, the scratches, the black color goes inside and it becomes a readable. I mean, you still have those incredible, incredible, absolutely incredible writings. I mean, if you look at them, it's just amazing what, what a technology and it lasts. 500 years, some of those manuscripts are still available. No paper can last that time. Paper has an acid content. It self-destructs after 40, 50, 60 years. Acid-free paper maybe lasts for 150 years, but it's gone. But these palm leaves scratched by those sages in the forest of Vindavan, they have lasted for 500 years. <laughs> that is called a technology, which is like... <laughs> God's own technology. Hmm? I have a book like this here. You can look at it. I don't know where you put it. I put sent one to the Berlin Temple. Where's that book? Prem Kishore has it. It's on the altar. Anyhow, if you want to see Prem Kishore, I can show you what I'm talking about. So, Srinivasacharya. The, the devotees in Bengal, they wanted to have the books. So how to, how to do that, what to do? But in Vrindavan, they didn't have any scribes. They didn't have anybody to copy the books. So the devotees in Bengal said, okay, send the original books, we'll make copies here, and we'll send them to the other place. There was a cooperation between Vrindavan and Bengal, because the Bengal devotees came from Mahaprabhu, no? Mahaprabhu's movement had become very strong in Bengal, and so it was a cooperation. So Srinivasacharya, he took the books there, and they were stolen on the way. So that's a very, very strong story, very, oh, very, very... I mean, the hearts of the devotees, they were like... Can you imagine all the books of the six Goswamis in those two trunks? And then they woke up in the morning, and they were gone. <laughs> their heart was like <sighs> no. it's one of those stories where you have to apply the everything what Krishna does is perfect and there's nothing bad which doesn't come for a good reason so everybody was devastated devastated and devastated again can you imagine the, the work of all your gurus for the last hundred years being stolen disappeared <clears throat> Anyhow, Srinivasacharya, he said, I look for those books, I'm going to go. So when he went to the capital city of Biram, Biram Bir, he was lecturing in a local temple, and the people, when they listened to his classes, they became to cry. 
So they taught, they spoke to the king and they said, hey, there's this preacher there. He's coming here and when he gives classes, he, he makes everybody cry. He's, he's so touching. And the king, who had found the books in the boxes which he had stolen, he was very worried and he was feeling, oh, I've done a great offense. Because at that time, nobody had one or two books and here, two boxes of books. Can you imagine? I was like, you you found the National Library or something, you know. And absolutely amazing. So he was feeling very guilty. What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? So he went to the class. And when he heard Srinivasacharya talking, he, he started crying too, like everybody else. He was so touched by his talk. And after the class, he requested Srinivas to come and speak to him. And he said, I have done a great, great sin, dear Sadhuji. Can you please give me some advice? You seem to be a very loving devotee. Please come. So he took Srinivas to his treasure. And he took him right into the treasure where he had all his valuables. And there were the two boxes of books. <laughs> and he said, I stole those books. I don't know what to do. I was very sinful. So you can imagine what Srinivasacharya was feeling, you know. <gasps> My books, our books, the Sampradaya's books, the Sampradaya's literature. <sighs> which never had gone anywhere else before. Of course, in some Indian big temples, they had scripts from long time ago in their treasured libraries. But no common person had a book. So that's what happened. That was the famous tour. It's in Bhakti Ratnakar. You can read that story with all nitty-gritty details. And it's the most famous thing. And now there was this sadhu. His guru had told him, go and preach to the people in the world who speak English. And he had taken sannyas because his, his guru had told him, hey, it's better be a sannyasi for this job. So he took sannyas, he gave up his work, he, he was like living here and there in places like Radha Damoda. My God. And writing and writing and preparing the English, preparing the English mission. Well, teeny little uh, fraction of or imitation when I was invited to go to Hungary <coughs> that was in 1974 there had been no preacher behind the Iron Curtain except Prabhupada who went to seek Professor Kotovsky in, in Moscow otherwise there had been no body of Krishna consciousness behind the Iron Curtain preaching. Actually, in Berlin we did. In Berlin we went and preached before, but only that here in Berlin. But so, I was in Sweden, the temple president, we got the invitation to go to Hungary by some yoga, yoga sports teacher. So I remember I was sitting at night uh, in, in the in my office in Stockholm and I was writing what will I preach to the communists what will I say so that they can accept our message and not so I was writing and writing page after page after page after page <laughs> preparing for going to so I can remember how Prabhupada was like sitting in Vrindavan and preparing his what is he going to write what knowledge is he going to give the western people you know then finally, he actually managed to get the money to print the books. He actually took the book to the president of India, Lal Bahadur, in his, that time. And um, he saw the book, the Bhagavatam, he said something appreciative. And that was it. No further help given to Prabhupada. Just we know we have seen this picture of Prabhupada making it to see the president of India and giving him his books. No? 
And there he was with some of those books. And he said, now I'm going to America. That story I've told many times, it's very, very, very emotional. But finally he was on the boat with those books. So Srinivasan, he took the books from Vindavan to, to, to Mayapur. Well, it's a long distance for walking, but it's not that far finally. You know, People can make it. But Prabhupada took the books from Calcutta to Boston through the Suez Street. He went like a long, long, long boat journey, long, I think six weeks or so. And so Prabhupada was, he was not used, it was his first boat trip. <laughs> he got seasick, he almost got heart attacks on the boat. He was an old man there, going there, like I said, with two, two boxes. And from this trip, these books, the Srimad Bhagavatam, has been published in all the languages of the world. Can you understand the importance of Srila Prabhupada? The historical importance of his message? This is it. This is Srimad Bhagavatam in one volume. Actually, this is 60 books in one volume. They're just printed so small and so 2,500 pages on here. This is the whole Bhagavatam. Somebody understood that not many people in the world will be able to carry around 60 books. So they made this special Sanyasi travel version. And it's still, whew, you carry that, you know, you got your bag ready. You know? <laughs> it's a very heavy book. So anyhow, this, this is the sacrifice. This is the book. This was published, inspired by Prabhupada. Inspired by his love, by his sacrifice he made. So, this the, he is the personification of Bhagavata Viti. Therefore, a, a Bhagavata is the book Bhagavata and the person Bhagavat. Prabhupada is the person Bhagavat. Narada Muni is the person Bhagavat. But he gives the Pancharatrika because it's also necessary to have deities, to worship them, to have Govardhan, to have a little throne, to make Kirtan. All the little, little details of our daily life, they belong basically to Pancharatrika rules, like how to offer your food so that you don't eat boga. This is all Pancharatrika. Even the process of diksha is also pancharatric, becoming initiated. The real initiation it takes takes place in the heart. When in your heart you feel, oh, I met my guru. Now I'm going to be his student. That is initiation. And when the guru says, here's my son, here's my student. Let me accept him and guide him so that he does things rightly in his life. That is initiation. The rituals, giving a japa, putting the kanti mala and all this, is a see, pancharatric part of it. We do it, it's necessary, but it's not the essence. As a matter of fact, if you do pancharatric things, but it's not backed up by the essence, then it's becoming some kind of imitationism. <laughs> People can imitate. There's a lot of imitation going on in this world. So, to get the real thing, the real essence of it, you have to dive deeply into the very substance. And what is that substance? It's devotional service, my friend is when you start thinking for God, when you start making plans for God, when you are inspired to be with God, in God, and do wonderful things. That's when life starts becoming interesting. That's when we are going the pass. Pass back home, back home, back to God. So Prabhupada and his journey with his two boxes of books without a penny in his pocket. Oh, I, can, I have to start crying when I think about it, you know. It's, it's unbelievable. Because I'm a traveler and I don't like to travel with two boxes of books. It's something like, no thanks. <laughs> I mean, I travel my, with my bags and I once traveled with two boxes of, of not books, 
merchandise from India. And I had over 108 kilos or something. No, even more, 130 kilo. And I had these huge boxes. <laughs> Actually, in India, they sell these big metal trunks. So, so because you were, you were allowed to take two pieces. So I got these huge pieces. And I said, well, they charge me extra. But when I checked them, I put them on, on, on the thing. They said, no, we don't take boxes like this. So then I had to get take from the two trunks. I had to make 10 bags. It became out 10 duffel bags of stuff I was traveling with. So I know very well what this is all about, you know. In that case, because I didn't have... Um, I didn't have money to check in 10 bags. Then I went to the airline and I spoke to the people who were going with just one bag. Can you check in one bag for me? And I actually got eight bags checked with other people. Eight bags. That's an accomplishment, you know. But then when I came to check my last two bags, they said, you're too late. So my eight bags left, but I lost my flight. <laughs> Anyhow, I got a flight next door day, and I recovered my eight bags in in New York. So, but it was like heavy. So I know what that means to travel with a lot of bags and overweight, and and they want to charge you a lot of money, and it's Krishna's money and the temple. Anyhow, I overdid it that time. Uh, I wouldn't do that again, you know. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, anyhow, Prabhupada did it at the age of 65, you know. And with heavy, heavy books. And no money to buy duffel bags or do, do something like this. <laughs> I offer my humble obeisance to my spiritual master again and again and again and again and again and again. And I can't keep... I can't stop offering him my humble obeisance, not just for myself. I'm offering him obeisance for everybody in the world who's getting benefited. And if I see Srimad Bhagavatam now in Chinese or in Taiwan or in uh, Thailand, in Bangkok, I just go, wow, all this happened through this sacrifice Prabhupada made. <laughs> All this happened. These transcendental books are now available virtually in, around the world in all languages. Yeah, may, maybe sometimes one place, it's something's out of print, but they were already printed many times. They are there, the treasures have arrived. And this is all what Prabhupada emphasized. And also Sri Ramaj emphasized the same thing. When I asked Sri Ramaj, what can I do for him? He said, no. You don't ask me what to do for me because you already know what you should do. Your Guru Dev has taught you. And then I said, yes, Srila Guru Maharaj, but now you're my Sanyas Guru. Can you please give me some service for you directly also? And then he said, well, if you get some extra money, then print books of the Acharyas. That's what I request you. And that's why I printed the signs of self-realization, or the, the, the confidential signs of Bhakti Yoga, all the books of Sri Ramaj. That was exactly my by his inspiration, because I, his books were not available in Spanish that time. So I wanted to do for South America the same thing like the Bhagavatam, all his books, 10 books in one volume. And that that's we just made the third reprint of the book, so it's it's still running, it's still capturing hearts because it's such an extraordinary book. But uh, that was the reason he said that, please, you help by giving books transcendental knowledge. And he didn't speak about his book. No, he spoke about books of the Acharya, but I wanted it to be his books. <laughs> Anyhow, these are like uh, soft, soft heart appreciations and some freedom is there. So, books are the basis. Utility is the principle. And preaching is the essence. And purity is the force. That's one of the slogans we ut utilized for spreading, our, having the consciousness of spreading. 
preaching is the essence. Actually, love is the essence, but we say preaching of love is the essence. Preaching and practicing of love is the essence. Books are the basis. Utility is the principle. And purity is the force. So, a very good understanding of what life is all about. No? Nowadays we would say, CDs are the base. Because so many books are found on CD, you know. Like nowadays, Prabhupada's books, all the books Prabhupada had in those bo in, in these boxes, they all fit on one CD. <laughs> you know, it's amazing what a CD can contain in, in written material, you know. Veda base. Fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. Now you can have all of Prabhupada's books on hand. <laughs> Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 7. And you go, here's the shloka. Anya Vilasita Sunyam Gyana Karma Dhyanavitam Anukulina Krishna Nushilana Bhakti Uttama. What? It's on your handy? He has everything. It's on, on the handy, on the this, on that, on the CD. It's a different age, you know. Prabhupada came to today, it's a different age altogether. Can you imagine? Can you believe it? Is it possible? The answer is yes. The answer is yes, it's possible. There's, there's virtually nothing impossible. And going back home, back to God, it is also not impossible. Taking advantage of the human form of life is not impossible. Becoming a lover of God is not impossible. Sacrifice yourself for the well-being beings of all is not impossible. So, we invite you all Go the path, the sacred path of Bhagavata Viti. Mm -hmm. Follow the Bhagavat Mahatmas. But also <coughs> cultivate Panchiratrik Vita. Have beautiful altars, make very nice art for God, sing beautiful songs for Him, make beautiful books, hold beautiful festivals. Maintain nice ashrams. And I say to you, see you in Hungary. <laughs> Because I have to go. I have a lecture to give today in Poland. <clears throat> And then going to Prague. For WBA meeting. What else to say? I just wish for all of you that you will be understanding this this point very clear. Narada Muni and Prabhupada as a representative. Prabhupada is perfect representative because he established so many beautiful temples, such an incredible deity worship, and so incredible books, and such an incredible freedom for everybody to participate. Everybody can and shall participate if they understand how lucky they are if they participate. To be connected to Prabhupada's mission to give love to others and knowledge to others There's no comparison to the lucky, luckiness you are. If you are uh, promoted to Bill Gates' private secretary with a salary of, of $10 million dollars every year, you're little nothing compared to being a distributor of Srila Prabhupada's mercy and representing the sword of knowledge and the heart of love.
<laughs> you're becoming knighted. <laughs> it's a transcendental knight. I mean, it's a stupid example because the knights were not that. They were not so. The royalties of. Hmm, chivalrous royalties of the mundane. No, but to become a, a representative of the sword of knowledge and the heart of love, you know, it's, it, kind of, it gives you like kind of a knighting feel, knighted feeling. No? Oh, now I got a sword. Yeah, well, what is that sword? Krishna says, armed with the sword of knowledge, stand up and fight against illusion. So it's a sword of knowledge. It's like what have you, what you have to cut your own illusions. <laughs> all the problems, all the all the all the demons are inside of you: lust, anger, greed, envy, uh, jealousy. <laughs> all all the problems. You are the problem. So you have you got the sword of knowledge, or you can cut inside of yourself. <laughs> get get these rascals out of you. Hmm? So it's, it's, don't worry, it's the sword of knowledge, it's not a real sword. So, but, but you do have to do some cutting there and some kicking out. In the, in the OIDA therapy we now made something, it's called the lexations or the, um, the clean outs of the system, the mental system through the purgas of the OIDA therapy. It's a very strong process. If you read them, you'll be, you'll be startled. But it's very good. At least I had a great time writing them. <laughs> I hope others have a great time using them and, and applying them. And this is purification, lineage of purifications. It's a purificatory ritual, you could almost say. So, I like to stay here much more and see the Lordship. Guru Goranga Radha Belin Ishwara. Guru Goranga Gaur Gandharvika Govinda Sundaram. They are most lovable Lordships here. Have guided us and guarded us so beautifully over those years. But don't take it for granted, my friend. Don't take anything for granted. The moment you don't hold back, hold on to the shelter, to the refuge, the current takes you the opposite direction swiftly. So we know the, the schlepper. Schlepper is a, a little boat which pulls in the big boats into the harbor. Has a, it's very small, but it has a, that strength to pull one of those huge ships inside. Because if, one, if those huge ships turn on their motors, they just go inside the harbor and destroy everything. So they're not allowed. So you... Be handling, handling things very carefully. You need to hold on, otherwise you're going to go. And it's up to you to hold on. You have to close on and hold. Like it says, every bird flies with the strength of its own feather. They may fly in flocks, but still, one of the birds thinks, oh, it's enough flapping, I've had it, the others will carry me along with them, no? So everybody flies off and he goes, floop. Hmm? Doesn't work. Birds are great flyers, aren't they? Their capacity of flying is just superb. They're not just flapping there and just some other keeping themselves up there. Acrobats are flying to the maximum per perfection. <laughs> with the little wings. <laughs> and with the beautiful feathers. <laughs> Everything done at perfection. <laughs> you want to be a bird? It's possible. 
But as human beings, we should rather perfect some other flying method. That is say, fly high in the sky with Krishna as your Lord in your heart. That is into the spiritual sky. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Any question? Jai. Is there any question? Yes. Yes. He was talking about cleaning. Huh, what? Cleaning the anarthas, no? The yes. And this. Jealous, etc. He thinks it's in there. Oh. And what way one person can do in this cleaning? Who? Oh, we cleaning these things. By obediently listening. We are like units. And our units, they are functioning. Because we are units, we, we, we do not know everything about our own unit, but it works. We are hungry, now my unit's working to find some food. Huh? So it's, but now if I go like this and I go and see, I see a supermarket and you go, Say, stop it, this is not yours, you have not purchased this. But you keep eating, they call the police and you end up in jail. <coughs> so, <coughs> there's limits. Your unit is working, your unit is breathing automatically. Your unit is, uh, is, is trying to, to find your place in this world. How does it work? But then the next thing comes. That you have to learn from your environment when do you go overboard. Like that you can't just eat from something because you see it in front of your eyes even though it looks very delicious and you are really hungry but you still cannot do like this. Unless you are a monkey in Vendal, then you can do. But the monkey may also get a stick by the sh by the fruit <laughs> waller. Huh? He said, "No, you don't come and, and touch or, and make a mess on my fruits." Huh? But for the monkey, it's very difficult that he sees all these beautiful fruits and he's so hungry, huh? and he sees the guy with the stick, so he watches him. When will he look somewhere else? They're so smart. <laughs> Those monkeys are so smart. <laughs> so they show, the, the, the guy with the sticks sees his little kid. Oh, my little kid, how are you? And the monkey knows. Now he's going to be obsessed with his kid. And he jumps. And the guy turns around. <laughs> so, so, so he can even judge. When will you have a, a, a slip of intention on your fruits? I'll get you. So, uh, there's different units, different permits. According to the permit we have as a human being, according to the, uh, the, the, the functional or the operation of ourselves, we have to learn from the environment what's right and what's wrong. Where can we do, where we cannot. And, of course, reading Bhagavatam is part of that merciful environment coming towards us. But sometimes you just see the eyes of the people when they look at you. When you see that my behavior is not approved by others, then we should learn. Then we should, oh, I'm doing something wrong. But you can also react in other way. They say, you're not approving what I say? Okay. I'm ready. Are you going to submit to me? Or are you going to crash you? 
Well, that's another way of going about things. Hmm? But not the Vaishnava way. The Vaishnava way, when he doesn't see himself being approved, he comes down, he becomes more humble, he adjusts to that. Lust, anger, greed, envy, all these things, they are, they are there, they are part of our previous karmas. Like we know some, some people are traumatized when they're left alone in their childhood, for example, no? Then, then they have this trauma that any time they, they feel it may happen again, they go all bananas. Huh? Start screaming, be, behaving. Another person never been abandoned, he don't react like that. No? So we, we know these things. There, there is, every functioning unit has its background, its past. That's why we follow this beautiful saying, every sinner has a future and every saint had a past of his own as well. So, <laughs> so we be positive and and look forward to do the things right. <clears throat> this is this is basically our life, and you know we all have had certain experiences in our life, and we still have more experiences. But we, one thing we should definitely not do, which is co create conflicts, should do the exact opposite. Leave our la huella digital. The, the fingerprint, leave the fingerprint of love on what you did and who you associated with. Every time you leave the fingerprint of love somewhere, this will be for your own spiritual uh, sukriti. It will be. So in other words, when people disapprove of us, sometimes it may not be very reasonable either. Sometimes we may be the victims of gossip. Or something like this, no? But uh, usually that's not the case. Usually when we are being disapproved of, it's because we just overdid it. We just didn't behave properly. And we shouldn't try to find the guilty party. Rather, we should find out what did I do wrong? What can I improve in myself so that the unpleasant circumstances will not reappear? It's a bit ambiguous, but it's a fact, because that's what happens in this world. Every action brings about a reaction. Did you get it? Another way more simple is make yourself be loved by all. And those who don't love you, for some reason, at least that they should not be angry of me. And if some people want to be angry because they're just angry in nature, huh, then maybe you can't do much about it, but you can still pray for them. Always you can have a positive attitude towards everyone. Okay, then. Any other question? And of course, asking the Guru is a simple way also. He usually knows what's right and wrong with us. Unless he's totally uninformed about our performance. <laughs> that may also be the case. Oh, Prem Krishna, where do you have that book, the the original manuscript? From, uh, from the, man, the manuscript which I gave to you, Chaitanya, in, in the palm leaves. It's in the shop. Then you can see it in the shop, how they utilize, how, to, how they preserved those treasures. Jai Nitai, Jai Prabhupada, the greatest book distributor in the history of Lord Chaitanya's movement, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Jai. Jai.